Hey everyone, today we have one of the most unique and special pieces that I've ever had here um, in my collection. It is the Moro Knives Vanquish, um, and this is the prototype for the titanium version of the knife. So let me get into you know a little bit of the of the specs of the knife. It's got a around 3.38 inch blade, eight inches overall, and it weighs in at roughly 3.4 ounces. So it is, that's the, the dimensions for you. And you've, a lot of you, because, you know, we're in the tactical knife world, a lot of you may have not heard of Corrado Moro. He, he is out of Italy in Turin. Um, and he makes essentially, what he makes is art knives. Um, and if you go look at his website, you can see some really incredible pieces. Um, Corrado um, is a little bit, you know, I don't wanna say newer to the knife game, but he has developed, you know, his knife making abilities and knife making skills a lot faster than many other makers and that's because um, in his background he is a tool and die maker um, and for those of you who don't know a tool and die you know machinist is actually someone who is capable of doing he they're capable of creating machines which you know create other machines they're making tools, which means it has to be extremely precise. Um, imagine you have to make like a new, whole new machine just to build something. That's the type of skill set we're talking about here. And, you know, he's been doing some really crazy cool knives, which is unlike anyone out there in the art knife world. And, you know, when I saw his work, I was really impressed. Um, but most of it is more, in the art knife world, it's more of like a two-hand opener knife. So it's less fidgety. But this is the first one that I've seen from him that has got a flipper tab. Um, but of course, you know, he, when, because he is from the art knife world, the, the frames were still made from ATS, you know, steel. Um, and it doesn't have a pocket clip. So what I did was I reached out to him and I said, hey, um, could you make me one out of titanium and add a pocket clip? And that's exactly what he did. Um, and this is the first one like that. And if you can see, it's got the word prototypes engraved in here. And, um, you know, my first impressions when I got this in hand is, this is incredible. You know, there's only two materials here. One, which is the steel, RWL-34. The second one is the titanium. Um, arguably the third one, uh, the screws, but, but you can just, I was speechless when I first got this because of the incredible, incredible details that he put on this. All the different types of finishing. So I don't even know what type of finishing is on each surface. But this has got more of like a, um, not orange peel, but it's a, you know, less fine, less shiny finish. Um, and then on the top, it's more of like a high polish satin highlights. Just so cool. Um, the reason why it's called the Vanquish is because Corrado wanted to um, commemorate the Aston Martin Vanquish, um, which is the sports car. That's why, you know, he's got the wheels here. He's got the grills from the front of the car. Um, these lines come from, you know, the back of the car. And this is like the spoiler. Um, and I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, what a what an incredible piece and you know having this in hand this feels 
more solid and more precise than any knife that I've ever owned. It's just that incredible. Um, when, you know, let's just check out all the details closely. The reason that I got to know Corrado was because of Michael Raymond. And many of you know that Michael Raymond is, you know, one of the most sought after makers in the tactical knife world. And he makes some of the most precise knives, um, which most people say, you know, a lot of people say he's actually the, the most precise maker. But when I asked Michael, who does he look up to in the knife world? He said his favorite is Corrado Moro. Um, because of the amount of work he puts in, the you know type of precision that he's got, undeniably, he is you know probably if not the best, you know one of definitely one of the best knife makers in the world in, in precision and everything. And you know when when I heard that from a very accomplished maker like Michael Raymond, I thought, man, I really got to t get my hands on one of, you know, Morrow's knives. And it does not disappoint. It does not disappoint. Let's check out the blade. It's got a hand rub finish. Beautiful blade, by the way. Extremely precise. And it's got one of the Actually, the best hand rub that I've ever seen in any knife that I've ever owned. It's got this really nice, shining um, finish, which I've, I've had before, but n not exactly like this. And the lines are just insane. It's just perfectly straight. It's almost dreamy, to, you know, when, when you have a look at this. And this work is done by hand, which I think is really incredible. You can also see his engraving name, Moro, right here. It's got a nice fuller with, yeah, it looks kind of like a bead blast finish on the fuller. Very nice touch. But the blade, the polish on it, just gorgeous. Really, really gorgeous. And this thing does not translate 100% in video, obviously. You have to see it in real life. It's it's like glowing at you. And, you know, looking at how perfect the lines are, it's just incredible. Um, Corrado does uses, you know, CNC, wire EDM, everything to make things as precise as possible. Um, let's check out the pivot area, which are is the grill of the, you know, of the car is replicated here and if you can see matches exactly with the grills from the blade which is really cool perfectly on both sides the next thing is the the wheels just look at how intricate that machining is and you can see when you open the blade it opens up so cool, so cool. Look at all the milling lines and the finishing in each area. Look at the plunge grind of the blade. Maybe it'll be easier to see open. Absolutely perfect. It's perfect. One slight oddity is that he leaves the unsharpened area a little bit further up. Um, I'm not entirely sure why, maybe because in the close position it might be able to get you, but I can't reach that from here, so that could have been sharpened in my opinion. And I don't know why, how I forgot to mention this this late in the video, but the action is actually a, a backlock flipper. Um, and it, I think he calls it the twin lock system, which, you know, 
I, I don't know much about back locks, to be honest, because I've only owned one cold steel before, the triad lock. Um, I'm not entirely sure how it works, so please forgive me for that. But, you know, the action is not, it's not, it's not a fidget, it's not a fidget toy, that's for sure. You can see that the back lock wants to pull everything back, and once you open it, the flipper tab lets you get out you, about halfway. You know, when, when you look at the, the flippers, regular tactical flippers, most of them open up, you know, once you pull the tab out all the way until you can't touch it anymore, until it's hidden in a frame, most of it is like this angle. And for this knife, if that was the angle, you would not be able to flip it open. Um, so Corrado designed the angle to go all the way up to 90 degrees, which makes it much easier to flip. But, you know, don't by any means think that this is like a regular knife with a detent because there's not really a detent. Um, it seems like it's held by the, the sp spring of the back lock. And if you don't open it properly, it just doesn't really open all the way. You know, it doesn't open all the way. It doesn't have a proper detent. So to open it, you have to really um, preload it or pull it hard. And it opens really solidly. Um, and I, I don't think Corrado meant it to be a fidget toy. That's why he made it like this. Um, and the back lock is, the spring is quite stiff quite stiff so and you can open and close it with one hand that's one thing I was wondering before I bought the knife because that's kind of like a must for me <laughs> even though it's not very fidgety if you can do it with one hand that's good enough for me um, yeah what a solid close you got to be a, a bit careful because if you have a finger here and then when it closes it's um, it's, it's gonna cut again I'm gonna open it really really solid and the spring here is so strong um, and the reason why you can close it in one hand is because once you press the spring the blade is gonna drop a little bit that's just enough um, and you know it it, it it hits kind of like the back lock here so it doesn't fall all the way to your hand um, which is great so you can do this one hand it falls down a little bit then you kind of put it the rest of the way back and it sucks it in from all the way out here so very unlike you know normal liner and frame locks that we're used to um, so many I'm not gonna be able to cover everything on this knife I'm pretty sure because it's, there's just so many details but one of the things that I've noticed is how solid it is you know for a 3.3 inch knife weighing in at around 3.4 ounces um, this has got to be the most solid feeling knife that i've ever had of this size or any size actually it's just it's like a rock you think a sabenza is bang vault block out solid you have to try this one <laughs> I don't think I've ever, even though it, it feels light, you know, art knives are supposed to be a little bit, I don't know if it's supposed to be, but there's a perception that it's flimsy, but this thing, I don't know, man, it's, it's like, it's a tank. It feels so solid. It's incredible. It's like, I've never felt any knife that's this solid before. And just listen to that lock up. You can just hear when it locks up. I mean, maybe that's the case with all of the back locks, but I've never had a back lock, but... And when it closes... I mean, this thing is like... It's solid, all right. It feels like a lot more... It just feels a lot more solid than regular frame locks. It, it, it's just the perception that I get. Um, obviously, you can't test this out, and no one has the same lock as this one. This is the only knife that has this type of lock in the world, right? It's not like a regular back lock, it's a twin lock, so I have no idea what it looks like inside. It's Corrado's own design. 
And what's so amazing about it, you can see the tolerances between it, it's so tight, super tight. And the amazing thing is he invents himself all the time. Every single year he comes out with something new, completely different. New lock mechanism, new gears. You can see the gears turning. Like, I don't know anyone else who does something so innovative all the time. You know, I talk about how Todd Rexford always innovates himself. Um, and I love that this guy, I think he's, you know, arguably just as or even more innovative because of all the things, all the different things that he does on the knives. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> it really is. And it's such a beautiful design. I can't imagine that a titanium, full titanium frame <laughs> would look so interesting and beautiful. And the blade is just, you know, polished all the way around, the spine of it, the back, the flipper. It, it's just so cool. Looking at all the details, uh, the fitment of everything, super precise. I don't think anyone else is, is this precise that I felt. It's just insane. Oh, another, another thing that I forgot to mention. My old Michael Raymond, you can probably go back in my timeline and look, find a starlet. Um, and that piece has what he calls the aligned screws. And for the aligned screws, it basically, if you can see here, all of the, the screw heads are aligned in one, one direction, the same direction everywhere. And Michael says, you know, that piece had a zirconium screw, and it, the diameter is bigger than this, by the way. Um, which he said was the most difficult part of the knife. It took the longest time. He had to be really, really patient to get all the screws to be aligned in the same direction. And that piece had maybe, uh, let's see, seven aligned screws in total. Let's check out this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in one side. <laughs> 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 aligned screws, which the diameter of it is even smaller than other knives. So the smaller the diameter, you can imagine, it turns the, the, the screw head lining a lot more when it's smaller versus when it's larger. When it's larger, you can get the screws to align a lot easier, but when the screw is so small like it is here, it is incredibly difficult, you know, it's like in the point zero 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 one inch tolerance category. And look at how he puts, you know, the screws into this little hook. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. Really, really, really incredible. I don't know what to say. You know, this is like by far the most solid, precise, and beautiful. You know, checking out the blade and the frame. One of the most beautiful knives that I've ever had. The only thing that I wish was, was be or not better, but like I, I like to flip the knives a lot and it's not the easiest knife for sure to, to flip and play with, but you can see if I can do it with my left hand, you know, it's all right, not, not bad. It's not meant for that anyways. <laughs> so yeah, I've been going on for almost 20 minutes um, on Corrado Moro, and, but I really hope that you can see how incredible this maker is because, you know, he's really, really something else. And when I said, you know, Michael Raymond said this guy's the best, I meant it. I even have, you know, it's in the chats with, between me and him on Instagram. And, you know, he thinks no one does the work or puts this type of amount of effort in a knife or building different knives. No one does except for him. And hearing that from an esteemed maker and seeing it for myself, how incredible the knife is, no question, absolutely one of the one of the best in the world, 
one of the best. All right, thank you very much for watching. See you next time.